What if things went different in Gravity Falls? I gave an announcement to make. From now on I will make every once in a while a video about alternate realities for fictional universes, which can include books like Harry Potter, films like Star Wars, or hear shows like Gravity Falls. And given that today is the birthday of its main characters Dipper and Mabel, it is just fitting to make a video about Gravity Falls today. Gravity Falls is an animated show that aired from June 15, 2012 to February 15, 2016 on Disney Channel that contains two seasons with 20 episodes each. Its director is Alex Hirsch, who also happens to voice like half of the characters including My ex-wife still misses me, but her aim is getting better! Her aim is getting better! You see, it's, it's funny because marriage is terrible. My grandma was right all along. I am the world's most perfect man. Remember, reality is an illusion. The universe is a hologram. Bye, Gold. Bye! Hit me with your best shot, Baldy! But my mind's been gone for 30-odd years! You can't break what's already broken! The plot is about 12-year-old twins Dipper and Mabel Pines who are sent to their great-uncle Stanford Pines in the town of Gravity Falls in Oregon. In Gravity Falls they find a journal written by an unknown author and would go on adventures discovering the unnatural. In case you want a better summary, I recommend this video. Like with future editions I came up with three different timelines, and like future editions this is going to have spoilers concerning the whole series, so be warned. What if Mabel abolished the Electoral College? The first one is the only one that is about our own timeline. In the last Mabel Corn, Mabel went together with Wendy, Candy and Brenda on a mission to get unicorn hair to protect the shack from the Razzle Dazzle Dorito. Unfortunately the unicorny whose unloving parents gave her the name Celeste Abelbethabelle told Mabel that she wasn't pure-hearted which caused her to go on a side mission to fix that. On a notepad you can see the things she did, and this includes abolishing the Electoral College, which is our first timeline. The show plays in summer 2012 and we just assume that a 12, almost 13-year-old girl just convinced two-thirds of Congress and three-quarter of state legislatures to just abolish a system in place since the founding of the United States. The 2012 presidential election would be the first one in which the popular vote determines the president. But thanks to a rise of third parties, namely the Libertarian, Green and Constitution Party no candidate got an outright majority and so a runoff election is held between Democratic Barack Obama and Republican Mitt Romney, with Barack Obama winning with 51.98% and Mitt Romney 48.02%. However with the LP, GPUS, and USP gaining a few seats in Congress the Democratic Party enters into a coalition with the Greens. Obama's second term would be like in OTL. In 2016 the Democratic Party still nominates Hillary Clinton as presidential candidate and the Republican Party nominates Donald Trump, and once again no candidate got 50%, and a runoff is held with Hillary Clinton winning. However ultimately the Democratic Party has shrunk because many progressive Democrats switched to the Green Party, but they still form a coalition, but this time invite the Libertarians as well. With Donald Trump never becoming president, we wouldn't see him reverting climate policies or build a border wall. The withdrawal of the Iranian nuclear deal probably won't happen as well and thus tensions with Iran cool down and Iran won't develop nukes. Clinton would also be able to act faster against COVID-19 reducing its damage, and we wouldn't see a rise of mega. In the 2020 presidential election Hillary Clinton won re-election against Bill Wealth. In the 2020 election the Constitution Party massively rose thanks to members of the Freedom Caucus and Trumpists flocking over. After the 2022 midterm elections the Libertarians also rose massively thanks to moderates from both sides including the Blue Dog Democrats making them roughly as big as the other parties. The Green Party hold 82 seats, the Democratic Party 92 seats, the Libertarian Party 78 seats, the Republican Party 98 seats and the Constitution Party 85 seats. In this timeline presidents wouldn't be able to get elected with a minority of the vote, which leads to no Trump era. This also causes the United States to turn from a two-party system to a five-party system. What if Stan didn't destroy Ford's project? In A Tale of Two Stands, we learn that Stanford was offered a scholarship in West Coast Tech. 
The most prestigious technical school however fearing to lose his brother Stanley would accidentally destroy Ford's chances, and ultimately get kicked out. In this timeline Stan decides not to pay a visit to Ford's intention, and thus won't destroy it. Ford would present the perpetual motion machine to the West Coast Tech admission team and would get accepted into West Coast Tech. At home he and his family would celebrate the news and after summer he goes to California where his university is. We never got a concrete location, but let's just say it is located in Pasadena, near Los Angeles because that's where Caltech is located. While Ford would perform very well in school Stan would be living with his parents until one day when their foddy Phil Brick had enough and forced him to move out. Stan would decide to go to California because he can still count on his twin brother. After Ford finishes with college I doubt that he would seek to study the unnatural but rather form a company in California, probably in Silicon Valley. It is also possible for him to go on his and Stan's boat trip on the Stan O' War for a few months or even a whole year. Meanwhile Stan still lives with Ford and while I doubt he would kick him out Ford may demand from him to get a job. Stan either could hope to be a salesman or just get himself a minimum wage job like a cashier. But Stan and Ford aren't the only Pines living in California, not even the only Pines twins because their nephew and his wife would settle in the town of Piedmont, located fully inside Oakland. On August Diary 1, 1999 they would have twins, namely Mabel and Mason Pines. In 2012 they still sent them to their great uncles who are just 45 miles away. This summer isn't as exiting for Dipper and Mabel as Gravity Falls, given that they don't get to fight monsters on a daily basis. Given how much of a workaholic Ford is, he wouldn't spend as much time as Stan with the kids, but would still scrap some time with the kids. Ford would however quickly find out that Dipper is quite smart for his age, and would bring him to his company. At the end of summer Ford would offer Dipper an apprenticeship in his company similar to the he offered him in the show. Mabel would still throw a tantrum over this, but without a demon forcing his hand, I doubt Dipper would reject it. And besides, they are just a one-hour drive away from each other, so they can visit each other anytime. And so after their 13th birthday, Dipper remains with Ford while Mabel returns to Piedmont. During this apprenticeship, not only Mabel, but Stan too would feel lonely because Ford spends even less time with him in favor of Dipper. When Mabel becomes an adult, she probably decides to live closer to Dipper, maybe going to San Jose and opening up a sweater store. When Ford would become old and retire Dipper would take over the business. Mabel and Dipper would start their own families, and while they are still best friends they do see each other rarer. Changes would also happen to other characters. The biggest one is definitely Fiddleford McBucket, because without his brief encounter with Bill, who never gets summoned wouldn't lose his mind and turn into a crazy hillbilly. Who knows maybe he does invent the internet and computer and becomes rich and famous. Suze and Wendy would never work for the mystery shack, but maybe find somewhere else to work. However without Dipper Wendy would still be manipulated by Robbie's song and Pacifica would still develop like her parents, which may lead to the party guests and the Northwest to remain wood. Gideon would still operate the tent of telepathy and wouldn't land in prison. In this timeline the show is a lot more boring and not much really happens. Things between Stan and Ford are much better, but Dipper and Mabel would slowly drift apart as time goes on. What if Mabel gave Bill the journal? In sock opera Dipper made a deal with Bill in order to crack the code of a laptop but instead got passed by Bill who then looked for the journal to destroy it. Conveniently Mabel had it, and though it first looked like she was gonna give it to Bill Dipper or as she calls him Bipper, she ultimately decided to fight back and sacrifice her chances with a boy who turns out to be a weirdo. In this timeline Bipper doesn't say who would sacrifice everything they worked for, just for their dumb sibling, and Mabel hands him over the journal. He then lowers the cake she is in a little bit, so she can't get out and then binds together a knot. After finishing that Bipper burns the journal in front of her eyes and Mabel realizes that she just messed up. When the ghost of Dipper finishes the show Mabel unties the cake. She falls down into the play screams Tadu and everyone claps. After the show is finished Dipper asks Mabel where Bill is and she tells him THQT Bipper outplayed her and that he burned the journal. Dipper would have a panic attack 
but she assures him that they can still find and take down Bill. Just after that Stan, Sue's Wendy Candy and Bruno arrive. Stan asks where Dipper is to which Mabel said that he probably went home early, and so they go back home as well. But on their way home they notice a huge crowd at the water tower and when they come closer to inspect what's going on they find the dead body of Dipper laying there and as Bill planned everyone, except for Mabel, would assume that he just lost it and killed himself. Back at the shack, Stan would contact Dipper and Mabel's parents, while in their room Mabel confesses to Dipper what really happened between her and Bipper. Dipper who posses a sock looking like him, would get completely angry and call out Mabel. At the end of it he would simply leave the puppet, meaning that Mabel won't be able to communicate with him. She would try to fix things, but she doesn't even have a journal and there are only three possible options she can think of. First is to ask McPookit to build a robot dipper for dipper to posses which doesn't really fix the core problem that he is dead. Second is to raise the death, but having him constantly want to eat brains is maybe not ideal. And third would be Bill, and she is smart enough to know it is a bad idea to trust Bill again. The next day their heartbroken parents would arrive in Gravity Falls for Dipper's funeral, and they decide that Mabel should go with them home. In this timeline Suze would never meet Melody and would remain lonely, McCookit would never regain his memory, the Blind Eye Society still operates, and the Northwest Manor party ends with the guests and party hosts being turned into wood. Ford would ultimately still return, but would just get greeted by Stan and not by any children or large, hairless gophers. When the mayor dies, it would actually be Bud and not Tyler or Stan who wins the election, and he would use his powers to free Gideon and get Stan imprisoned and confiscate Shaq after which Ford would have to go into hiding probably at McCookett's. He would after his meeting with Bill seal the rift successfully and prevent any chance of weird Majadon. In this timeline things would go dark really fast as Dipper would just die slash be trapped in the nightmare realm and Mabel would have to return earlier. This causes also other changes, mostly for the worse. These are my collection of three what ifs which either make the US more interesting, the show more boring or the show darker. As I said in the beginning, I'll do stuff for other pieces of media someone in the future. If you liked the episode, leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.